Or is this bringing Ron Paul, former US congressman, who has put a bit of sense on these things? Hi, Ron, thank you for your time today. I don't know, every time we cover this kind of thing, we see the cameras out, we see the protests out prior to it all. Is it just the end of the day, um, a kind of a posh dinner for the heads around the world, or does this tater tate actually lead to anything practical? What do you think about it? Is it a waste of time or not? I, I, I think it's totally... I think it's totally impractical, except from their viewpoint of politicizing things. But I don't think policies change, and and uh, there's a lot of and you know the me media pumps it up too. They like tidbits to talk about. But as far as a business meeting goes and change in policy, I don't think this is the way it should be done anyway. Because I don't believe much in these uh, large groups of politicians getting together. So if you're going to have any serious discussion, they should be one on one mm. and uh, accomplish what you need to by getting a lot of people together and having agreement and coming out of there and say, well, we've just solved a great problem. But somebody's going to do something or say something that's going to sound like news and it may shake the markets for a bit. Sometimes yeah. that happens. But as far as policy goes and uh, and seriousness in a meeting like this, uh, I, I don't think it's worth very much. I know it's a fact of life. It does make your eyes roll slightly. And you see some of these um, adult representatives here of big countries around the world saying, I'm going to talk to you. I'm not talking to you. And yet they're all in the same room together. Yeah, that sounds like high school stuff. <laughs> you know, I'm not going to talk to you anymore. Uh, no, I think the diplomacy is lousy, even if you agree with somebody. And on occasion, I'll agree with our president. But then it's undermined, you know, sometimes by the diplomacy and the way, way he talks and the aggressiveness. I'll do this, I'll give you this, or I'll put sanctions on you. And uh, the threats are involved, even, even if there's an attempt to correct a policy. But, uh, no, I, I, don't, I don't think that's good. And I think that if this is going to be a social operation and the 20 get, along, get around to coming together, I think the most you could hope for is maybe getting to meet and talk to people in a serious manner and coming away and say, you know, I can talk to that guy, you know, and we should stay in touch. Maybe we can correct our problem. Yeah. But when there's many different languages spoken, I guess that's a little bit more difficult than that type of strategy would be if uh, everybody spoke one language. Yeah, well, of course, when the Russian president uh, meets the US president, all the cameras click, uh, whether it happens or not. Do you think they are going to bump into each other? You probably know about, more about what goes on behind the scenes of these things than, than, than us. Are they likely to physically bump into each other? And what would they do, walk past each other? What would Trump do? I think he would say hello, and he might even shake his hand, I would think. I mean, it would be such a disaster uh, for him, and uh, it wouldn't represent the United States very well if he shunned him. You know, if he went to by and then turned away and went off for his hand. Now, I, I, you know, uh, Trump has his quirks, but I don't believe he would do that. Uh, I think he uh, said uh, he he hello to MBS today, and just it wasn't a meeting, but he said hello to him. Of course, he had some uh, motivation for that, I think, as well. Yeah. So this c canceled meeting that was so vaunted, it was on, or it was off, it was on. There was going to be a tater tate, -tate and a fuller meeting. Um, yesterday, at short notice, Trump called off the meeting with Putin. And um, why was that? For, for political gain back home, or what? Well, yeah, I think the political pressure um, back home, but they uh, might have brought up the su subject of the uh, the change in the in uh, in the Black Sea along mm. with the uh, Ukrainians and bring that subject up, and he might be put on the box because he might. I think Trump possibly could be understand exactly the way I understand it that uh, you know th this was this was a stunt by Poroshenko. And even if he believed that, he has a hard time getting around that. So I think he might be trying to avoid an uncomfortable position, but mm. a political uh, pressure says that he has to go along with NATO and, and uh, Europeans and, and the sentiment here in, in, in this country. And, uh, you know, it just seems, unfortunately, there's a strong sentiment. Any time they can find something that they can construe as being negative toward Russia, yeah. they do. And so, uh, yes, the, the uh, politics are are against somebody being half decent and having a different policy, but uh, that would be my guess. Of course, uh, only Trump knows exactly why he canceled the meeting. Yeah. Of course, he had that caveat as well, saying that uh, there would be the door open for a, a, a meeting when this whole Kurch straight thing dies down, whenever that's going to be. The U.S. State Department, the official line, though, is that that uh, has sent a message now to Moscow that Moscow is isolated, full stop. Now. Um,
Angela Merkel just last couple of days said, well, she thought this whole Kerch thing was in was Moscow's fault. Nonetheless, she's opened a dialogue. It seems she wants to carry on doing the talking. So what is the US hoping to gain here by shutting the doors and going, hi, you're over the other side of the room, but I ain't speaking to you? Well, I, I don't think there's any, any, anything to gain that way. And uh, I think that uh, Merkel is interesting. They said one of her aides said that what they should do is uh, boycott uh, all Russian ships that uh, come, come out of the Sea of Lavra. And that means all, all American ships and Europeans, which is total nonsense. But I think the main goal they have is, uh, is, is to they try to isolate and punish and put on sanctions and limit their ability to get on financial transactions. Mm -hmm. But the whole thing is, from my viewpoint as an American and some spent some time in politics, I'm concerned about that for our viewpoint, from our viewpoint, because uh, when I look at what happens to countries that have a reserve currency, spend too much money, go deeply in debt, stretch themselves too far, yeah. you know, not too long ago, a Soviet system did that and they yeah. got into trouble. So I think that if anybody uh, should be vulnerable and should be worried about it, it should be the Americans being, uh, uh, you, you know, isolated. And uh, that would be detrimental. In a way, I sort of like uh, some uh, independence and not these, um, you know, international organizations. But that's not what would be coming. Isolation it would be painful for Wrong. us because someday there will be a challenge to the dollar, and then that'll be a big problem for the well, United States. Well, let's let's look at the the looming trade war that's already happening. A lot of people are saying between America and China. We've only got a minute left. I want to talk about um, where you think that's going to go, and if anything is going to be uh, sorted out between China and America at this meeting, and also maybe what Argentina is going to want out of this uh, G20, what it's going to want to uh, have from that party, so to speak. Minute, over to you. Uh, well, I think between us and, and China, it's going to continue up and down. One statement, the markets will go up, it'll be good, and then they'll say something else, it'll go down. But I don't think it's going to be settled. Uh, it's a one upsmanship who, who wins? They're all appealing to their home base. They're dealing with problems created by decades of debt and malinvestment and all the problems we have. And you can't correct economic problems by tariffs. Uh, I come from a free market viewpoint, and I don't even believe in tariffs. I don't believe in sanctions. I, I think that's punishment, mm -hmm. and I think it's Ill, illegal, and we shouldn't be doing that. And we and we throw our weight around, and uh, I I think that'll backfire on us, and and we could become the nation that got isolated because uh, we haven't uh, won friends uh, over the years. Or we we tend to aggravate people and say, yeah, we had to go along with what you said, but we really didn't like it. But now uh, we can change our tune, and I think that has started already. Ron Paul, former U.S. Congressman, we've had ten minutes. You've Busy time. Thank you for making it and spending it with us at RT International. It was good to see you, sir. Have a good night. Uh, day where you are, of course. Thank you. Thank you.